Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In this video, as you can guess from the title, I'm going to share with you about market capitalization, or we usually call it the market cap. In layman terms, the market cap is simply the public perceived value of a publicly traded company and it is frequently used as an indicator to measure a company's size. Okay, before I move on any further, let me just show you how you can quickly get hold onto a company's market cap info. Let's take Nestle Malaysia for example. You can just simply Google Bloomberg Nestle and look for Nestle sticker, click in and you should be able to see the market cap data. Now, Bloomberg is one of the top, if not the top, business news and analytics website. So rest assured their data is pretty done reliable in this sense. Alright, so know that the market cap has a formula of share price per share times with the total number of outstanding shares. For example, Nestle Malaysia, as of the making of this video, has a share price of 139 ringgit and 60 cents per share multiplied by its total number of outstanding shares of 234.5 million shares you will then get a market cap of around 32.7 billion ringgit now the next question is how is this info useful to any investors know that market cap is just one of the indicators used by an investor to size up companies and understand their rough market value in any stock exchange. In general, stocks are categorized into six buckets of market caps, which are nano cap, micro cap, small cap, medium cap, large cap, as well as mega cap. Now, since the categories are not defined here in Malaysia, I've converted them from the US stock market and they should be applicable in this context. Nano cap companies have market cap of less than 200 million ringgit. For micro cap, they're usually 200 million to 1.2 billion ringgit. For small cap, they are 1.2 billion to 8 billion ringgit. For mid cap, they are 8 billion to 40 billion ringgit. For large cap, they are 40 billion to 800 billion ringgit. And lastly, for mega cap, they are companies with more than 800 billion ringgit market cap. And as of July 2020, Malaysia still does not have any companies that falls into the mega cap category. Alright, for the simplicity of this video, I'm just going to talk about small cap, medium cap, as well as large cap companies. Firstly, we have the large cap companies, or we usually refer them as the blue chips, which is similar to how blue chips having the highest value in a poker game. The stocks for these companies are usually of a higher quality and stability and they are usually very pricey in that sense. And that is because they have a proven business model as well as a strong track record in the industry. And on top of that, blue chip stocks usually have very minimal growth which is why they are able to give such a stable or high dividend yield to their investors and shareholders. So if you are a dividend investor, be sure to check out all the blue chip companies. And some example of the blue chip companies are household names that you must have heard before, such as Maybank, Public Bank, and also TNB. Next up, we have medium cap companies and they are sized between a large cap as well as a small cap companies and they are usually considered to be more volatile as compared to the large cap companies. Mid cap companies are usually the competitors of the leaders in their respective industry. So these are usually the growth stocks that growth investors are looking for. Okay, so just to name a few of the mid cap companies, for example, Hong Leong Bank and also DG, they are all stiff competitors to their rivals in their respective industry. And lastly, we have the small cap companies and they are usually the young companies that may have very promising growth potentials. And these small cap companies usually aim to disrupt the industry by bringing in new technologies as well as innovative and creative business model. Some examples are Aeon Credit Services as well as MyEG Services. Now, that is not to say that all large cap companies are good stocks, 
whereas all small and micro cap companies are necessarily the bad stocks. A large cap company may have a very stagnant growth and their business model could be outdated. Whereas for the small cap companies, they could have a very creative business model and could be the next large cap companies in the upcoming years. So it totally depends on your individual risk appetite as to whether to choose a large cap, a mid cap or a small cap stocks. So always perform your own research before you make any investing decision. Okay, that should pretty much sums up today's video. Now that you have learned about market cap, you can finally understand how people are comparing companies in terms of their sizes through this market cap indicator. Also, this market cap is a great indicator to show whether a company is steadily growing over time or is in a declining trend. All right, that's all for today. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you like it, please help me by smashing the like and subscribe button down below. It really helps me a lot with my channel. If you're active on Instagram, do also consider following my Instagram as I post daily facts and quotes over there. Thank you very much and I will see you in the next one.